March Madness, explained in Star Wars. The first couple of rounds with 64 and 32 teams are like a bunch of starfighters. The low seeds are TIE fighters and the high seeds are X-Wings. The TIE fighters usually lose because they don't have shields and the X-Wings do. Minutes approval. All those who write up with minutes, raise your hands and start counting without clickers and you raise them high. Hi everyone, my name is Katya Pai and I'm the Vice President of Autism Speaks U. Um, today I'm here to talk to you about the Lighter Blue Benefit Dinner. It will be taking place next Tuesday in the Twink Ballroom from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, Light It Up Blue is actually an internationally recognized holiday. It's celebrated um, by lighting up a significant building blue in order to raise awareness for autism. Because we're all for affirmation. Sorry. Sorry. Any dissent? Hi, uh, my name is Daryl George and I'm the Vice President of Finance for Phi Delta Epsilon, which is the Professional Medical Fraternity on campus. Um, so I'm here presenting uh, Phi Delta Epsilon's annual etiquette dinner. So the purpose of the etiquette dinner is to teach proper dinner etiquette to undergraduate students, which is an extremely useful set of knowledge to possess in professional interactions down the road. Vote. Raise your hand if you approve this the sponsorship. $1,500 additional. Um, so I went over this in the fall. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but this is our RHA executive budget for the year. This is basically updated, like in general, there are some things we're waiting on receipts and university audits and stuff, but basically updated as of the end of February, let's say. All right, hi everybody, I'm Janice Gerda. Um, I think I've met some people, but perhaps not everyone, so just real quick a little bit about myself. Yes, I'm the Director of Residence Life. We have some um, things in the work that my title may change in the relatively near future as we reorganize some things in Housing and Residence Life, but it's looking like that probably won't happen until July 1st. So. Um, so to back this up a little bit, as you may have heard, we have a few more students than usual in the last couple of years. Um, and in the very big picture, you know, o over many years there's been plans about taking a look at expanding housing so that um, as the university grows that we expand some housing. And actually, even before we start to have bigger classes, there were discussions. Most, I think that's probably what's going to be most impressive about the whole process is that um, the plan right now is to break ground sometime in May. And it should be open not for this coming year, but for the year after. So August 2015, we have to be moving in. That's really fast to build a really big building. 274 beds in the main part, in the five story. No, we don't want to do that. Um, in the main part, there is an error in here. This is 16 double occupancy townhouses. It's actually eight double occupancy townhouses for a total of 16 students. But if you add those two together, you get 290, and that's the occupancy of the building. So here's some pictures. So the um, this is they put this on the front. So this is a view of the new residence hall. Is if you were coming from between Clark Tower and Cutler there sort of coming between that space and walking up towards it. And so this is sort of a dust. So you've probably heard about this, where it is. So it's in that space north of Clark Tower, sort of bounded in here. Okay, and here's that shape again with the townhouses. This is kind of looking, um, it has the, uh, this is just the first level. So the second, third, and fourth that sort of come over this, there's a little dotted line, so it's missing there. So you can kind of see they've started to put in some landscaping here. There's a little courtyard here. That's looking from, so this is the baseball field right here, looking at East 115th, because you're going up and down the streets. And so these are the townhouses. Um, okay, so I have a couple of things. Um, as you guys know, this Thursday we have prospective students coming. So speaking of admission, right? So you really get direct interaction with them. So make that positive, negative. positive. Yeah. Um, so we have ice cream social in house two that Magnolia is heading. Um, but <coughs> anyone is welcome to come. So <coughs> setup will be at seven o'clock. Bless you. Um, seven o'clock in house two. And before that is crew life, which is like a carnival type of thing that IJ has a booth there. So if you're coming to pick up your brass beads, 
stop by, say hi, you know, talk to some prospective students there. It's at um, 4.30 in the Delbert gym. Um, so that's what we're working on in PR, and today we also combine with programming to work on Mess Hall Rendezvous, which Tim will talk more about it. But when you come to events this Thursday, make sure you wear our T-shirt, things like that. So. Okay. Yes, it's the return of bacon and ice cream in um, combined committee. Uh, basically what we did, uh, after we, um, I, we combined with Lynn's committee to talk about kind of the general overview um, of what exactly is going to be in Mess Hall Rendezvous. Uh, within this next week, I'm going to be sending uh, people two things. Uh, one, um, I'm going to send the presidents and send the councils basically like a big list of like all, like a detailed out, like, outline of what specifically is going to be at Mess Hall Rendezvous, what specifically, what specific booths and what the expectations are um, for you guys uh, to go to this event. And then also uh, for, for the non uh for Cedar and Mistletoe, uh, the, I'm going to have two Google Docs sent out one. Uh, for uh, tour suites, I said this before, but if you want to show off your suite, um, it's basically just for going in, seeing, seeing the living area, um, or being a tour guide. There may be some incentive for that. Uh, it's just basically showing your vice president's hall, showing like the laundry rooms and all that stuff. So those are just things to expect from this week. So I feel like it's Friday committee today. Um, today we talked about the different skills that we learned in RHA and how we can apply them to next year in council or other organizations or working in a job and I really encourage you guys to kind of reflect together as a council or just individually on how RHA has kind of impacted you and what your takeaway from this year has been. I think at least as a council that's been really helpful to kind of hear what each other is kind of say. And we are doing a procrastination tip of the week to prepare you all for finals. And so our tip of the week is to make your schedule now. List everything you need to do for finals, make a plan, and stick to it. Uh, we gave updates on laundry and um, the vending machines. Those are in progress. Um, not sure how, like, the laundry uh, project has some pros, has some cons. We'll have to ultimately look at the end uh, result to see if we want to establish that throughout all the communities. Um, we also have been working on figuring out two projects to kind of best utilize some of the rest of the remaining budget. So one, we're going to have uh, two booths, one on Mather Quad and one on the main quad, um, to promote our feedback survey about community standards, give out some food and it's good PR. And then we also will have an incentivized online survey about the, the same on survey online. They're both incentivized um, to kind of set groundwork for where we are with community standards before we jump right in. Um, so we get to understand better what the res residents think of community standards, um, if they think it's an issue, and how they think we should approach it. Okay, first person. This person's personal theme song is, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Likewise, their second wish from a genie would be financial stability regardless of life's misfortunes. This person's favorite film for sick days is Star Wars Episode Four, and they'd like to go skydiving before they die. Who is this person? Andrew? Two. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> right. This person's biggest fear is moths. If they didn't have to worry about money, they'd be a pediatric surgeon, and would most likely live in Victorian England. This person's personal theme song is Billionaire by Bruno Mars, and out of all of human history, this person most wants to have dinner with Lynn Trent. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It said so much to me. Open floor announcements. Yes, Mindy. Um, I want to say thank you to those of you who came out for Saturday service. Yeah, I have two uh, service drivers this weekend, so that's really fun. Ben. Uh, today, uh, Maple of the Week is presented to Christina Show <coughs> Juniper Community Council, and Victoria will be handing the certificate. Okay. okay. Well, let's see. Well, Mindy stole part of my thunder. I was going to recognize everyone who participated in Saturday of Service, uh, especially the councils who took on projects of their own. So thank you very much for that. That was representing well and also serving our community. Um, I'll take uh, my other funder from Lynn, but I'll take from the different direction. Congratulations to all the February OTM winners, and I believe we had a regional winner in February, didn't we? Yes, yeah. yeah. it was for um, JP, and um, it was the nomination by Christina, who won the week of the week, which is awesome.